So in class today, we started activity two of the old My Magpie Lab. Now we've been using Replit, and right now, if I press the run button, it still tries to use the string explorer file. We want to switch that over to start using the Magpie runner. So the first thing that we do is edit, <laughs> we edit the run button.sh and we change uh, String Explorer to Magpie Runner. Now we can, if we stop it and start it again, we have a prompt to say, let's talk. If I say no, it says why so negative. Okay, and it'll keep on talking until we say bye, and then it ends. This is all of Magpie Runner. It's what it does is it has a main method. So every file always has a class. Uh, and that class in Java is always the exact same as the name of the file. Um, so very simple structure. So public class, uh, Magpie Runner. Uh, I always, I prefer the braces on the same line, but anyway, that's just me. And then it starts here and here. And the main method is always where every Java app in all of history always starts from a main method. And we start a main method here with the brace on the right spot. Uh, and you see the first thing that it does is creates a uh, Maggie, uh, which is a magpie. This is instantiated. That just means that these methods aren't static. And if we look at it, when I ask uh, Magpie to do things, I don't say, hey, Magpie file dot do things. Uh, I will instantiate Maggie and I'll say, Maggie, could you do that? An individual, an instance. Um, we'll keep covering that. But anyway, so I create a Maggie, the Magpie. And then I ask Maggie to give a greeting, and and that's when they uh, say, uh, let's talk. And then I take an input using my scanner. That's, that was what it's waiting for. And then we enter in a loop. And as long as what uh, the statement that the scanner takes in doesn't equal by, it'll keep looping. And what it does in the loop is that it asks uh, Maggie to respond to the statement. And so I pass the statement that is recorded, I pass it over into that method um, called getResponse. So that's a parameter to this method. So the grammar for Java is pretty simple. This is subject, noun, uh, sorry, a noun, verb, direct object. Maggie, I would like you to respond to this. Um, and so uh, I give it that ingredient and it responds and then I take another input and it, it loops back up. And as long as that input uh, isn't by, it'll keep on looping again and again. So if we take a look at get response, we added a lot of things today. Um, so um, Let's look over some of the things that we added. Okay, I reset things back to how it were, uh, how it was. And so here it is. The parameter gets passed in here. It's called statement, just like it's uh, labeled over here as statement. But just so you know, it doesn't have to be the same. Um, it'll just fill it in. As long as it's the first string parameter being given, it'll just fill into that spot. I could call it something else, but using the same name does make it more convenient. I try to keep it the same name, but it doesn't have to be. Um, so then I'm going to make a response, and then I'm going to return that response. Response. So that's what it gets printed, the return. And I can see over here, it actually prints that return. Um, uh, I don't know why there's a space here. But anyway, it prints that uh, the return here. Um, so that's why we're just returning the string, we're not just printing it. And that's what the return type here 
is it's promised uh, to get a uh, to get a um, type of a string in the end. So um, I ca I start the response as blank first, and then I see if in the statement that I was given, if the index of the word no is greater than or equal to zero. And that's a problem. If I were know this, I'm super positive. Now, if I say that and I run this, it'll say, why is so negative? <laughs> um, oh, sorry about the weird. Anyway, um, and the reason why that that's happening um, is because it's finding the word K-N, I mean the N-O, inside K-N-O-W. It's still finding that N-O. Um, because it's not checking to see if it's uh, a word on its own, it's just flagging that one, those two words. Um, and if it didn't, if I said hi, uh, it wasn't able to find this because it looked for the index of the word, uh, these two letters, and it came up with a negative one. And a negative one is not greater than or equal to zero. So it failed this. And then it looked for all of these other words. So I could use the word mother or father or sister or brother. I only need one of those, but it'll ask, tell me more about your family. Um, cool. And then if it doesn't find any of these, the word no or a member of your family, then it'll just get a random response. So I can just hit enter. And so it'll just use a random response from down here. So uh, let's now look at the assignment. So the assignment asks us in, in activity two, first activity, we already did that. It's just chatting about chatbots and learning about strings a little bit. Um, so now in activity two, we are asked to first say, tell me more about your pets. And to do that, I find, now that I see how it responds to mother, father, sister, or brother, you see the or statement. If the index is greater than or equal to zero, or, and it uses line breaks to kind of separate that up. So I'm just gonna press Command C, or Control C on a Windows computer, right arrow, enter, Command V, I'll paste another one. And then I'll say, like, uh, if I were to use the word pet, dog, cat, or um, I think Andrew keeps a pet falcon. Um, so if you have any cool pets, now it'll look for those words. Now, it only asked us to respond to dog or cat, but um, because I copied four, I might as well do four. If you wanted to, you could cut uh, one, but just so you know, if you cut this last line, you see I'm accidentally getting rid of the open parenthesis when this condition starts. And so it's going to be upset until I restore that parenthesis. Because this is actually just one long uh, compound conditional, because it's this, or this, or this. Okay, and then I'll just say, tell me more about your pets. Now if I stop it and start it again, I can just say dog, and it'll say, tell me more about your pets. Okay, now we're making a chatbot that responds to a little more than just the word no and mother, father, sister, or brother. Next up, it asks us to respond to our the name of our teacher. So very simple. I can just copy and paste it all over again. Um, and now if it, it can look for um, Mr. A or uh, Adeletta, um, and you cut the other two down. Now I can say, let me just say, um, Mr. A, sure sounds swell. Okay, cool. So now it should also respond to that. You're also asked to make three more of your own. Um, now, one of the other issues is that it wants us to trim, which means if I give a bunch of spaces, press enter, it should say, 
please s submit something. Don't just give a blank response. Or if I press enter uh, without anything, it should also say the same thing. So let's just say um, I could put an else if right here. Else if statement dot link nature cats is uh equal to zero. Cat? All right, so I can say if this. What are you saying? I'm saying if the statement's length is equal to zero, then set the what response. What are you saying? To what are you saying? Okay, so I'll set my response to. Please don't submit a blank message, or you know something to that effect. Um, so now, if I stop it, so again, and now if I hit a blank message. It checks to see if the length is zero and says don't submit a blank message. But if I tr I can trick it, I can leave a bunch of spaces and it thinks it's not a blank message. So what I'm going to do is this statement that's coming in, I'm first going to set statement equal to statement after it's been hit with the trim method. And so now it's always nice to put in comments, um, put any white space before and after the message. Okay. And so now it will trim that down. And so even if I restart this and hit a bunch of spaces, it'll say the, that uh, don't submit a blank message. Now you were also asked to have more random messages, uh, um, yeah, like these. And so what we had to do is we changed this from four to six, and this constant, which is why it's in all caps and why it's uh, being labeled as a final, this constant is immutable, it can't change, that's what constant is. And so it just says, okay, we're gonna draw a random number um, from zero up until this uh, number, so zero to five. Um, it was zero to three, now we cranked it up to zero up until five, and so that way I just made copies of these, and so if the random number is one, then it does this, if it's two, it does this, so I just had uh, a couple more responses. Now there's this... Nature cat. There is an important point here at the end that what, ha why, know? if I say, uh, which is uh, going to take a higher priority, brother or dog? Right now, right, because in the sequence, in this long chain of if statements, it's going to find the first match. And as soon as it finds a match, it will... Uh, cease uh, going down this line um, and return the response. And so uh, as long as it has one of these. Uh, so anyway, the order is how you can control the priority. So if you want it to check for the word K-N-O-W before the word N-O to head off that problem we saw, then you could put that first. Um, and there's a lots of other approaches, and we'll, and we'll go to solve the KNOW problem as well as um, other ways we could um, respond to the message here. Um, certainly, um, modern voice assistants don't just do a sequence to check things. We, they analyze the language and the grammar in order to weight the sentence that you've given it uh, to the to best understand it. Okay, I hope that helps explain activity two in the Magpie Lab. If you have any questions, please let me know.